just come my way wherever I go Hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way In one of our most recent videos, we paid our respects to the final resting place of George Spahn, the guy who owned Spahn Ranch where Charles Manson and his followers lived during the Tate LaBianca murders. And in that video, I did some research and I learned a lot about Lynette Squeaky From, or From, depending on how you say it. Some people even say Frommy. No matter how you say her name, her nickname, was squeaky and supposedly it was George Spawn who gave her that nickname because she would always squeak whenever he would touch her leg. Well in doing research for that video I learned a lot about squeaky and that is why we're here today. We're visiting something called the squeaky pool in the Westchester section of Los Angeles. Seated behind Charles Manson at his first arraignment was Lynette Fromm, a runaway teenager Manson found in California eight years ago. He named her Squeaky, and she became one of the first members of his so-called family. A tiny girl with red hair, she, like the rest of the family, developed an intense loyalty to Manson. They believed he was the Messiah. The combination of sex and drug-taking and the presence of Manson led to the development of a twisted religious philosophy and ultimately to Manson's engineering the Sharon Tate murders. But the loyalty was unusual. During the trial, Lynette Squeaky Fromm was among several followers who shaved their heads and put X's in their foreheads. And even after Manson was found guilty of the Tate LaBianca murders, she and other family members remained together, always trying to stay in touch with Manson. The dancing clown upon the wall is calling all to City Hall. Your grave is mine, oh can't you see? It's your own con to be free. The truth I've known, you are the king. My love, this world to you I bring. You know, you know, you can be free. It's at your kind and come to me. To be completely honest, this neighborhood is so quiet and peaceful, it's hard to believe that it has any kind of tie to Charles Manson and what happened and his followers. But this house right here, mind you, it's not the original house, but this is where Lynette Squeaky Fromm lived for a very short period of time when she was growing up. It was only a short part of her childhood. If I'm not mistaken, it was from like 1960 to 1963, and the house has been torn down and rebuilt but there's one thing that remains, and the people who live here call it the squeaky pool. And that's this lamppost right here, when she was living here in 1960, when this pool was put in. Uh, she actually wrote her name or scrawled her name in the concrete. Now what we came here to see is right here at the bottom of the lamppost, written into the cement. You look very closely, and I'll keep in mind, it's been a number of years, so it's been kind of faded or worn, I guess you should say, but you see it? Lynette Fromm. Lynette Squeaky Fromm. Crazy, right? From the Manson family. And then right over here, get a little closer if you can see it. The date, 1960. A little hard to see, right? It's crazy that it's still here. Aside from her name and date written in the cement here, there's really not much information I can find about her time living here from 1960 to 1963. She did go to a school up the street called the Orville Wright Junior High School. We're gonna visit that in just a little bit. But how cool is it that she was here, squeaky from, and her name is still here, no matter how much the street has changed. I mean, the house has been torn down, it's a new house here, but her name is still here at what the, the locals call the squeaky pool. I didn't have anywhere to go. I was on a bench in Venice because my father had kicked me out. We had started to argue. He was, he just didn't want the interaction with me. So I was out, you know, on this, I was out at the beach there 
all by myself. And here's Charlie. He had been going somewhere else, I think to Hollywood. And instead of going to Hollywood, he stopped off in Venice, walked down the road, and he didn't see me until he got close enough. He said something, and then he, he said, so your father kicked you out. And it was amazing to me. After everything happened with Charles Manson, Squeaky remained loyal, and she eventually changed her name to Red, a nickname that Charles Manson gave her at some point in the past. She ended up moving to Sacramento after moving around for quite some time, and in 1975, President Ford came to Sacramento for a rally. And that is where Squeaky really gets into trouble. President Ford looked down the barrel of a loaded automatic held by a red-haired woman in a long red dress. But the gun didn't go off, and he's all right. The woman was wrestled to the ground by a Secret Service man, and the president was hustled away. She is being charged with attempted murder of the president. She is 26-year-old Lynette Alice Fromm, nicknamed Squeaky. She's a member of the so-called Manson family, followers of the convicted murderer, Charles Manson. Our White House correspondent, Tom Brokaw, was there when it happened this morning, and here is his report from Sacramento, California. It was mid-morning in Sacramento when President Ford left a hotel to walk over to the state capitol for a meeting with Governor Edmund Brown, Jr. and a speech to the state legislature. This was a political trip, part of the president's campaign to lock up the Republican nomination. So he was shaking hands as he went along, working the crowd, as politicians say. And it was a friendly crowd. Accompanied by aides and Secret Service agents, the president reached for every hand in sight. Suddenly, a young woman holding a gun appeared at the president's side. A Secret Service agent grabbed the gun and wrestled the young woman to the ground as other agents formed a tight protective shield around the president and moved him swiftly to the Capitol. September 5th, 1975, President Ford is in Sacramento for a rally. And he's walking through the crowd and Squeaky walks up to him wearing a red robe, kind of like Handmaid's Tale, that kind of bright red fabric with a, with a hood. She walks right up to him and mere feet, she pulls out a gun and points it at him and immediately Secret Service agents tackle her to the ground and he gets rushed off, President Ford. Now she starts screaming, it didn't go off, it didn't go off, and she swears to this day that she wasn't really there to inflict harm or to kill President Ford. She just wanted to get a message across about saving the redwood trees, I think it is. She ends up getting sentenced life in prison. 1987, Christmas Eve, she escapes. The search continues in southern West Virginia for Squeaky Fromm, the woman convicted of trying to kill President Ford 12 years ago. She escaped from the federal women's prison last night, but even bloodhounds have not picked up her tracks. Till a dramatic escape on Christmas Eve of 1987, which was motivated by a disturbing rumor about Manson. I got a letter he had, that said he had cancer. I called two people. They said that they heard the same thing. I would had no way of getting in touch with anybody, and I, was, I wasn't going to just stick around. I realized after I escaped that that I need him more than he needs me. And they caught her less than two miles away from the prison within 48 hours of her escaping. Eventually, 2009 rolls around, she gets paroled. And instead of being released right away, because of her escape, she has to serve that extra time. She eventually, she gets out and she's living, last I checked, somewhere up in the New York area, like New England. School is in today, and I don't want to get any closer than where I'm at right now because there are kids outside playing, but that building that's right across the street, this intersection here, is the Orville Wright Middle School, where Squeaky went to school when she lived here. In fact, it's like two, maybe three blocks away down the street. Now, I walked inside and I talked to the people at the front desk asking for, per for permission to just be in front of the school and show the sign and they said no. So respecting their wishes and again, don't want to show any kids, but part of history, man, part of history. 
Right now we're in a parking structure in downtown Los Angeles walking over to the Hall of Justice where during Manson's trial, the followers, the girls were holding vigil outside singing songs. We're gonna to go to that exact spot. The corner where the Manson family, the Manson girls were singing is one of those places I've always wanted to visit. And it's, it's just this iconic, whenever you think of Charles Manson and the trials, it's a very striking image. There's both video and photos that were taken here at the street corner. And I'm gonna show you guys both and try to line up as much as I possibly can. Right here is the County of Los Angeles Hall of Records. And right across the street, this behemoth building right here is the Hall of Justice. And this is where, well, the trial for Manson took place. Charles Manson, 36, chose a house at random, tied up the family at gunpoint, then ordered his followers to go inside and commit ritual slaughter. everything. I feel no bad. I know no bad. Open them. I'm not against you. Huh? Are you bitter? Bitter? No. No. I have a question. Are you uh, guilty of any murders? Are you guilty of plotting any murders? I killed a chicken once. Any and human being? No. No. You're absolutely innocent of any conspiracy to uh, commit murder or telling anyone to commit murder or planning it? I'll plead guilty to the Indians. Of course, I'm going to show you some video and pictures. But I highly encourage you to go online on YouTube and search for the Manson trial because there's a whole bunch of footage from the news covering it. Now we gotta be safe and walk the crosswalk here over to the corner for the Superior Court. Now this building that's right here on the right, we're gonna talk about it in just a moment because there's a photo that you can see this building behind it in the background. As soon as we walk over here, I'm gonna start talking about it. So I'm not sure if there's gonna be an issue. Standing outside the courthouse or the Hall of Justice, there's police everywhere. The corner that we're at is North Broadway and Temple. It looks like the 300 block, 300 North. Now you can see this sign in some of the news clips that was shot that day. You see that giant concrete slab to the left of the screen and that pole that's to the right? Well, right between both of those is where back in 1969, the Manson girls were holding vigil for Charlie while he was on trial inside this building. And the song that they were singing in this clip is Dancing Clown on the Wall. But it happened right here. And this is insane. Whisper words, you come to me. The song I sing for all to see. The past is gone and now I know. Inside the cell, nowhere to go. Oh, love. My love, look at your love. A dancing clown upon the wall is calling all to City Hall. Your grave is mine, oh can't you see? It's your own con to be free. The truth I've known, you are the king. My love, this world to you I bring. You know, you know, you can be free. It's at your kind and come to me. Well, of course, a lot will change over time. But keep in mind, this happened back in 1969, and at the time of recording this, it's 2022. But just imagine, pretty much right where I'm standing is where the news crews would have been standing with their cameras. Man, talk about crazy history, right? Sandy, 
You've probably been here as long as anybody keeping this vigil, and it now looks that it, it will come to an end, that they will move the girls and Charlie. What, what do you girls intend to do? Uh, we'll be here until it gets out. After this trial, there, there'll be another trial, so they won't move them for quite some time. But we'll be here until he's out, and he is coming out. What about the girls? What do you feel about the girls? I love them, and I'm with them wherever they go in spirit, and they'll also be coming out. Um, Sadie won't be transferred for quite some time because there's that Hinman Shea trial coming up. <coughs> but, um, but if they do move them to some other place, will you follow? Uh, Charlie will be coming out soon, and they won't be moving him for, for some time. I notice that you all sit in the same attitude with your hands the same way. Is it significant? What does it mean? Uh, we're on our knees. We're giving up. You're giving up? Yeah. Not on Charlie and the girls, though. No, we're with them. In other words, uh, we give up the system. Uh, we're down. We, we uh, give it to whoever wants to take it. We vex ourselves out of the system, and, and we give it all up. I understand that there are some people that are trying to rescue you from time to time. Oh, the, the Jesus people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Jesus people have, uh, in other words, people see that this is the end, that uh, a revolution's coming or a lot of big changes are coming. And uh, the Jesus people are, are slipping into the minds of all the people that are confused and don't know where to go. Do you feel that the end is in sight and a change is coming also? Big, big, big changes are coming yeah. real soon. You're kind of thinking the same way they are then, aren't you? Well, uh, every, you know, everyone you, you meet talks about it. Uh -huh. you can, even the, even the lady, little old ladies who sit on the corner who have had their welfare checks taken away, and the little old man and all those people, they're all, they all come on this corner every day of the week yelling about revolution and that, uh, you know, about the people who are in power better give it up. You know, Nixon better give it up, because if he doesn't, the whole thing's going to be destroyed. Do you feel that you see a limited segment of life as you sit here, that most of the Everything. people that come by here are in trouble? No, you know what, we see, on this corner we mostly see the people who have been down, you know, for all their lives, because these are the people who are going to court, you know, the black people, the Chicanos, these are the people who spend most of their lives in these courts with their sons going to, you know, jail, and their daughters going to jail. And we see every every kind of way of life there is. Do you, uh, you think that you might write a book, chronicle your experience here on the corner? We, we've um we have a book already. Do you? Oh yeah, it's Charlie's writings, our writings from when we all got together. But um, people have created an image of us all, and uh, the book kind of goes is contrary to that image, and so they want to perpetuate the lie they've created about us. So really, nobody really wants the book. Oh, I think you'll find somebody that wants it. A lot of people. Thank you so much, girls. Nice to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> the video that I just showed you of the four girls sitting right next to the slab singing, dancing clowns on the wall, was taken at the very beginning of the trial. It wasn't until a little bit later on when they actually shaved their heads, and we get some of the most striking images from that time. One of the most famous images of that day was taken pretty much from right about here. There is two girls on the left-hand side of the screen, two girls on the right-hand side of the screen. You can see that crosswalk, and the building that's behind them is the Los Angeles Superior Court. Man. This is, this is, this is just blowing my mind. It is almost impossible to tell the entire story of the Manson family in one video. Since Jessica and I moved to Hollywood, we've been telling little pieces of the story, like little puzzle pieces here and there, trying to visit as many places as we possibly can. And I'm telling you right now, seeing these places with my own two eyes, feeling the earth underneath my feet, it's pretty surreal. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A battle's always a coming my way. 